Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Charles Lee. I'm chairman and founder of MicroConnect. I'm really very pleased to be able to speak at the Beyond International Technology Innovation Expo in Macau. And uh, on the subject of what's next, and I'd be very happy to share some of the experiences and insight that we have developed over the last couple of years since I left uh, Hong Kong Exchange. I have been in finance for more than 25 years now, and including a 11 year running the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And I think uh, that experience gave me tremendous insight as to how the financial system works in, in our economy and in our society. I think um, the modern Wall Street model, which has worked wonderfully for over 100 years now, is probably one of the most important human innovation um, in our society because we try to organize capital into big corporations and then divide them up into stocks and shares so that they can be held you know, by the public. So on the one hand, you concentrate finances so that centralized markets are able to allocate them to important large corporations to develop the economy. On the other hand, the shareholding system allow that capital to be distributed and held by the general public. That model works for the industrial age because the economy at the grassroots level are unclear and very difficult to gather information. So you need a centralized, institutionalized, professionally staffed Wall Street to organize everything together so that information can be discovered, price can be discovered, and execution can be delivered in the traditional financial market systems. But I think what's next is the most interesting question is whether or not what we have seen happening in e-commerce, in social media, where the, whether the revolutionary changes and disruptions that we have witnessed over the last two decades could potentially similarly disrupt the traditional Wall Street model. More precisely, I think we all know that in the industrial age, we all need to go to a department store because the department store need to aggregate all the goods and merchandise together so that we all go to the central market to buy what we need. But the digital age, the internet age, allow that distribution and commerce to be conducted online via internet through a digital technologies and then allow logistics to be developed it so that we are able to actually shop at home and have our goods delivered and have marketplaces, online marketplaces to allow money and goods to be exchanged. That's a fundamental disruption of traditional commerce. And I believe that we are now coming to the age that similar disruption is going to happen to financial services as well. Because at least in China today, the entire economy is largely become cashless. What that means is that most of the financial activities in China, even at the most base small businesses level, are completely digital, which means that they're completely transparent. With the digitalization of the businesses at the grassroots level, transparent, digital, the question becomes, do we still need to force the little guys to organize into big corporations? And many of them will never do. Millions of them will never do. China have 17 million small businesses. And I think uh, it is time now for us to actually have the opportunity to completely change the face and change the structure of financial services to allow 
finance for the first time to be actually connected as a sustainable capital to provide growth and fund growth and capex and development at the small businesses level. And more importantly, that allows the global investment community to be able to finally access to probably the longest sustained growth opportunity and quality returns from a blue ocean of small businesses that have not yet currently been available because of the concentrated nature of our financial services. So at Macro Connect, we try to innovate a completely new way of delivering financial services. Instead of using the traditional product, the traditional discovery processes, and the just traditional delivery processes, we actually adopted a complete new way of doing it. It's what we call a new operating system. A MicroStar it has five key elements. It's a new product, the two arms, and there are two maps. That's really is the new MicroStar operating system to do finance differently. First of all, why we wanted to focus on small businesses. It is very clear, small businesses are largely resides in the consumer sector. And that entire sector and the small businesses contribute to close to 60% of China's GDP, 7% of government revenues, and close to 80% of employment. So it is clearly the sector where the most vibrant part of China's economy currently exists and grows, and capital need to find a way to access into that tremendously important sector. And we set up our mission to achieve that. The way to do so is, as I said, is a new system that we call MicroStart that consists of five key elements. One product, two arms, and two maps. I think on the, in, the one product is really the, it's called a daily revenue contract, DRC. This is not debt because we have to, as investors, have to share the downside. And it's not equity because equity is not economically feasible for us to execute that small levels on a large scale. But it is a daily direct contractual arrangement to pay back from your revenue in exchange for upfront CapEx investment. So it's called a daily revenue contract, a DRC. It's a complete new asset class. It's, a, it's, a, it's the asset class that fit for purpose that is very helpful to the small businesses. Meanwhile, the daily recovery of returns allowed the investors to take transparent, distributed, reliable, risk managed, and diversified high quality returns. So it's a really a win-win for all kind of a new product. But that product, because of its unique nature, require two very different systems of the ensuring delivery. Because on that distributed level, we have to be able to collect on the investment. So there are two arms. One arm is in charge of collecting money digitally, directly from the revenue from the little businesses. And that sort of a digital account split system in the various consolidated payment systems in China is highly advanced and highly feasible and is actually being practiced by many industries. So we just intend to utilize the existing technology and systems to allow our investors to be able to secure daily digital collection of returns. On the other hand, once the money is collected, we want to make sure that we have a modern new kind of exchange where the underlying infrastructure is a blockchain, allow us to authenticate 
that every single dollar that is collected every day into the system is irrevocably recorded in the blockchain, belongs to the investors who choose to invest in any particular segment, any particular store, or any, for any particular period. So that ultimate penetrated regulatory oversight through technology is the way that we're able to do this on scale with efficiency, with very minimum human and costly management and delivery, monitoring and enforcement system, which will not be feasible economically for the small businesses. Maps, and those two maps are specialized terms essentially describing an engine that allows us to deploy such huge numbers of a small investment individual size on large scale with efficiency. And the other map is really allowing us to find ways to make sure that we are able to accurately project economic and financial performances of particular kind of businesses in particular locations so the investment can be rolled out not only with scale and efficiency, but with accuracy and quality so that the investment can continue on a sustainable basis. So this new way of doing things has never been tried before, but because of the digitalization of China, it is highly feasible. We have started the journey we have invested in over a thousand stores in China across over a hundred different sectors, largely focused in the four large industries, retail, consumer, services, and cultural activities. Those are the sectors where it's the basic needs of everyday life of the Chinese consumers. So despite all the challenges, and despite all the perceptions that small businesses in China are risky individually and may not necessarily be investable, as a whole, if we are able to build a portfolio large enough, diversified enough, distributed enough, then we will truly be able to find a new way of investing, a new paradigm of financial services that is transparent distributed, diversified, sustainable. And most importantly, because the fact that we are able to do so in such a distributed manner, impacting potentially hundreds of thousands and potentially millions of small businesses, our aspiration is that in the next 10 years, we are able to create and fund a million small businesses with a million annual revenues and which in turn will be able to create and maintain at least 10 million jobs because this sort of an investment new investment paradigm will likely allow us to promote impact investing esg investing so that investing when not only doing good we can also do well and that is really is our dream and that is something that we are now on a journey to achieve and i think that is only possible because of the deep and widespread digitalization and technology automation in china particularly in the payment industry and i think with that we can see the china's consumer sector which may be the farthest away from Wall Street in the traditional financial services methodologies. And thanks to technology, they probably will become the closest and most likely going to become the most successful because they are able to give us a way to invest simply, more efficiently, more equitably, and more inclusively. And I hope that uh, we will be back again and updating you on our progress. 
and I hope that we will be able to travel on that journey together with many of you who have similar dreams and aspirations. Thank you very much. Really appreciate the opportunity to speak at this great expo activity. Thank you.